I recognize from some of our other battles in other parts of the city where we've said no to the migrants, no to the tents, no to the hotel motels, Holiday Inn Expresses, and no to the shelters for migrants. So thanks for all coming out here tonight. another location where our elected officials and I don't exempt my own Republicans because they also have taken umbrage to what I've announced on WABC radio where a migrant center where a tent and where the illegals are going to be brought and I've been called every name in the book in fact some creative language today by the city councilman, soon to be ousted when we elect Ari Kagan on next day. When uh, Justin Brannon, who I must tell you, I said this on the radio, the most powerful radio station in the nation twice, back to back, belly to belly. Many of you probably remember hearing it. It was back on August 6th and August 7th. It seems like a lifetime ago, right? We're talking about two months. And I had said the schematics were already drawn up. They're going to put a tent right off Shore Road, the entrance about 77, 79, down on the very baseball fields that I played with in, on high school against Severian and got crushed. So I know those fields, the fields of sorrow, right next to the public bathrooms, which amazingly actually work most of the time, unlike the other public laboratories in parks throughout the city of New York. So I said it on August 6th, I said it on August 7th. That very next day, Justin Brandon came on in the morning at WABC and called me a serial liar, a degenerate, a person who makes things up, 
his uh, language today. I'm a demagogue. I can't even understand what that is. It's too many syllables for me. It's multi-syllabic. And also that I'm a washed up comic book villain. Whoa! Oh, that's pretty creative. But I'm used to it because everywhere I've been asked to come, and remember, I only go where I'm asked to come. Thank you. documentary evidence that has been provided to me by rats in City Hall. Rats. <laughs> we eat the Parmesan cheese. Two-legged rats, not like the four-legged rats that Mayor Eric Adams is afraid of. They're members of his own administration. And let me explain this because I've explained it so many times they can't root out the rats because there's so many of them. All roads lead to where I was born and raised in Canarsie. Thomas Jefferson Democratic Club on 92nd and Conklin. That is the most powerful club in this city because to the victor go the spoils. Eric Adams beat me fair and square, and so the Democrats have their appointees. That's patronage. But what they haven't banked on is that there are thousands of civil servants who serve our city ably and nobly, no matter who the mayor is, whether it was Giuliani, Bloomberg, de Blasio, or Eric Adams. Many of them are looking forward to their pension, and unfortunately, they want to lift up and move out like a lot of other people of Florida. They don't like what's going on at City Hall. They don't like the fact that we're being lied to on a regular basis. Exactly. And I think we should give a great round of applause to these civil servants who will remain anonymous, or they'll be on the unemployment line, who continue to feed me information that is on August 6th, 7th, and 8th. Justin Brannon, from then on, was going into City Hall every day, begging the mayor and his staff, please, please, not until after November 7th. He is not against bringing illegal aliens in and housing them in Bay Ridge. His politics indicates that. But he understands he's got a race against his fellow councilman, Ari Kagan. This is, this is going to be a tough race. Yeah. So he's telling City Hall, please, a thousand times, please, don't let them put that tent up in Shore Road Park. Well, that's it, I'm going to lose. He knows it. Those are million dollar mansions all along Shore Road. Those folks are pissed, and rightfully so, as all of you in the neighborhood should be pissed. Whether you're poor, whether you're blue collar, whether you're white collar, whatever your background is, you have been lied to, as our whole city has been lied to, by a dysfunctional group of elected officials who are arguing with one another. It's like when you grew up, it was mom and dad are arguing with one another, and grandpa Joe Biden is like fumbling, mumbling, and stumbling. But then again, I gotta tell you, my fellow Republicans are no better. You saw that in the House of Representatives today. They're all fighting, they're all pointing fingers, and they expect us to have faith in them. I have faith in people, not politicians. to keep the feet, the hands, the arms, the legs, the private parts. You get that, Harry? <laughs> and also Paul Rodriguez is joining us. He's running in Sunset Park against the Socialist Avila. Yeah, yeah. It's our job to keep their private parts on the fire and make sure that they live up to their work. Because i got to tell you guys, as much as I'm supporting you, like Ronald Reagan said, trust but verify. Sliwa said, verify first and then I'll trust you. But now we're at critical mass. Today, Eric Adams, swagger man with no plan, mayor of the illegal aliens that he originally invited, we cannot undo that, 
Same with Hoko. Who recently oh, yeah. said to Governor Abbott, you're a madman. So what did Governor Abbott say? Okay, I'm going to double the number that I'm sending to New York City. And Abbott has always been good to his word. We now get 800 instead of 400. And so today, at his final press conference before the mayor goes on a vacation at taxpayers' expense, he told us we're going to have to choose a lot of other locations. Whoa! Now understand this. 3,000 locations within the five boroughs have been already fully vetted out, researched, and the schematics have been done. Wow. They are ready to roll at a moment's notice. They don't give you any heads up. They roll in, a tent takes them three days to put up. And when that tent arrives on Shore Road, and everybody is shocked, by the time you put up the for sale sign, the tent will be up, and you'll have a thousand single, able-bodied young men of military age with nothing to do and nowhere to go, right in your backyards. And then all of a sudden you're gonna say, hey Justin, what happened? Well, you know, you elected me to another term, it's my final term. Oh, father, all of you. Better make sure that doesn't happen. And if you want to look at my track record, I haven't been wrong yet. Nope, that's right. Can anybody here tell me when I predicted anything that I had the facts to that I've been wrong? And I'll tell you what, it's not because of me. You know me, I'm a hothead. You know me, I run my mouth a mile a minute. It's my wife Nancy who's here who double checks, triple checks, quadruple checks before we go on the air. Let's give her a great round of applause. So now, what is the plan? Unlike our politicians who never have a plan other than to destroy one another and get wine dined in pocket line by all the lobbyists. And understand, with the illegal aliens, there are billions of dollars to be made. Guess whose money that is? Our money. We have no say over it. We pay for contracts in the city of New York that are no bid contracts to Eric Adams' cronies. Corruption. There's no transparency because they're under the special executive emergency order. Oh boy, didn't we learn about those in COVID-19 and during coronavirus? In which you can't even question them about the expenditure of our tax dollars. No transparency, numbers redacted. The most recent, a group called DocGo. Remember that name, DocGo. D-O-C-G-O. Eric Adams gave them a $432 million contract. What? No big contract, even though they never did work like this before, never. The CEO of DocGo, his name, very ironic, Anthony Al Capone. Oh, I can't make it up. <laughs> Two weeks ago, he resigned as CEO because he overneeds Time Union. Newspaper did a background check on him, and his background was similar to George Santos, who made everything up in his life. Oh. He had to resign right on the spot. You would have thought that would have been pause and concern for Eric Adams in the administration, like, let's put this on hold. No. Nope. Eric Adams said, let's charge forward. These are our friends. And by the way, almost all of them have made contributions, not just to the initial election of Eric Adams, but the chutzpah, the wables that he has to be fundraising for his re-election now. Whoa! Republicans are going to do because I have just as many enemies amongst Republicans as I do Democrats. I'm running for mayor again. Yeah. And I'm if you're a Republican, an independent, and Democrat. 
and you don't like me as a choice, great, let's come up with other choices, let's have debates, let's have discussions, and let the people decide based on what people do, not just what they say. That's what democracy is about. We need more of it. But to the matter at hand, because a guy like Justin Brandon now, who's on the spot, he decided to vilify me and his opponent, Eric Kagan. Wrong adversary. The Kings County Democratic Chairwoman is Rodney Michaud. She is an assemblywoman. You may have seen recently the articles in which he has said on stationary representing the Kings County Democratic machine, which is the largest in the city, that white neighborhoods have not done their part. Whoa, that's playing the race card. In the words of Eric Adams, you're all crackers, right? So when all else fails, you divide and separate New Yorkers by race. This time, it ain't gonna work. Because this is about supporting legal immigration, not illegal immigration. We all support legal immigration no matter who they are. But not an easy pass of illegal immigration where we don't know who they are, where they're from. No medical checks, no background checks, no vaccinations. And we got to pay for them to come in to our city and then we get deprived of services because the mayor has said he's going to take care of the illegal aliens first then before he takes care of the citizens. And that is wrong. That's a shanda. That's right. America's generation immigrants. They have come up to me and they have said, Curtis, I had to wait years to come in. I had to be tested. I had to be told to wait in my country of origin until eventually I got the yellow light and the green light. Many have come looking to become citizens and joining all of us, and they've taken a test in history and civics that most of us could not pass. It is a very difficult test, especially, I know my three sons couldn't pass it, because they don't even teach them civics and history in school anymore. It's a long, hard road, and many of them have left family and friends behind who are still waiting for their opportunity to come in legally, legal, legal immigration. Today, the mayor and Kathy Hochul were dancing the horror because special status has been given to the Venezuelans. They call it the fast track. They cannot be deported. They are the untouchables. And I've been at the Roosevelt Hotel where there are many Venezuelans. Except they have no proof that they're Venezuelans because they have no paperwork. But they speak Spanish. And I'll have to tell you, in the eyes of some of the city bureaucrats, oh, well, if you say you're from Venezuela, then you are from Venezuela. There are no checks and balances. Again, you can declare yourself to be whatever you want to be as an illegal alien. And we have to give you everything that our own Americans don't get who are down on their luck. Those who are homeless. Those who are mostly disturbed. Those who have drug problems. Those Sleeping in our subways, sleeping in our streets and in our parks. They get who got. They get nothing. If you're an illegal alien, you know what you get? You get to stay in a three-star hotel, the old Milford Plaza, the Watson Hotel. You get to stay in any number of hotels at taxpayers' expense. Three squares a day. And if you're not happy with the food, the bagel and the schmear, you get culturally appropriate food. Gone at all subby trailers, beans and rice, with a chuleta on top, a pork chop, my food, my fungo. And if they don't have it, they'll grub hub it for you at taxpayers' expense. Where are they getting all these motorbikes? 
yeah. and Vespers riding up and down the streets to the wee hours of the morning. I've been with veterans on 125th and Lexington where we, the Guardian Angels, patrol. By 10 o'clock, they have to be in their shelter on Ward's Island. If they're not, they lose their bed. The illegal aliens have no curfew whatsoever. Here's a man who has defended our country in peacetime and wartime. He's got to be in under a curfew at 10 o'clock. But an illegal alien can run the sweet streets, smoke weed, drink cerveza at taxpayers' expense. That's wrong. That's got to stop. Over to our two other speakers. Harry Kagan, you must help him crush the liar Justin Brandon. Yeah. 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 And he's an immigrant the legal way, he's going to explain his story. <laughs> but before this ever came up, Justin Brannan stood on the floor of city council and voted yes to defund the police. What? Oh, no. Oh, no. He lies about it all the time. You look at the list, it's published. You have Borelli from Staten Island, he voted no. Let's, let's give an applause to Borelli, yes. But who voted yes, and who danced with the speaker at that time, and the mayor de Blasio, but Justin Brandon. No way. He says now, no, no, you, you misunderstood that. No, no, we don't misunderstand it, Justin Brandon. You hate the cops. You supported Black Lives Matter. You supported Antifa against the blue. There's no misunderstanding. When you had the back the blue marches here in Bay Ridge, where was Justin Brandon? He wasn't with the cops. He wasn't with you. He was with Black Lives Matter and Antifa. Along with his congressman, Max Rose. You saw what happened to Max Rose, Justin Brandon. Who you call Molly Yatakis? Kick your ass! Yeah. 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 Justin Brandon was for no cash bail. He says, but oh, we don't vote on that in the city council. That's true. But I never saw him stand up and condemn the state assembly or the state senate for voting for no cash bail. And the man who signed it, Andrew Evilize Cuomo, King Cuomo the second, the son of Mario Pacha Bruta Cuomo, King Cuomo the first. And to Andrew for all of those who speak the dialect of Italian. Andrew, ascendeme, to you provenos facci, and like your father Mario, you are. They signed the death warrant to New York State and New York City when they signed no cash bail, and Justin Brandon was with them. Whoa! Whoa! So call me a liar, call me a comic book villain, Call me whatever you want to. But I'm a son of Brooklyn, born and raised down the Bell Parkway, exit 13. I'm an American before I have an Italian American or Polish American heritage. Amen. We're all Americans. That's what unites us. This flag, the red, white, and USA! 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 You notice, even all the border cities that are under siege, in Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and California. There have been no demonstrations, have there been? The people have felt beaten. Their politicians abandoning them. They feel all is hopeless. Well, guess what? We proved that all is not hopeless across the Verrazano 
bridge in Staten Island where we stood up and said no to the illegals. No to any of those facilities that you're going to put up and call migrant centers. Right now at St. John's Villa Academy, a stone's throw from here, grandmothers and mothers surround that facility morning, noon, and night to make sure they don't sneak in the illegals. They got arrested last week when they tried to sneak illegal aliens into a senior citizen home where they kicked out 200 veterans and their families and their wives the greatest generation to make room for illegal aliens. Eric Adams, swaggle man with no plan, is going to go to Mexico City. I had a good nightlife there. I have guardian angels in Mexico City. Very good nightlife in Mexico City. He's going to go to Quito, Ecuador. How many of you have gone on vacation there for medical and dental procedures? He'll come back with a whole new face, a new set of white teeth, and very little expense. And then he finishes his trip. He says to learn about illegals. And the decadent and hedonistic capital of South America, Bogota, Colombia, where the cocaine and the hookers flow 24-7-365. So Eric Adams, don't lie to us. This is a vacation at taxpayers' expense. You're like the captain of the Titanic. The crew told you, hey, it's an iceberg ahead. And because you're pretentious, you're obstinate, you think you know it all, you said no, full speed ahead. The moment you see that the ocean liner hits the iceberg, you're the first to jump ship, and you're on your way to Central America, Mexico, and South America. Do us a favor, stay there! Yeah. Don't come back. I declare myself, because he has been a mayor in absence, as we saw during the floods, where the hell was he? I know, called Sofrito up in the Bronx, as he followed a hottie, a little shorty out, and didn't wake up until well after the flood started. Hey, Eric, I know everything about you because you got people ratting you out. I am your mayor in exile on the island of Manhattan, like Napoleon was on the island of Elba. I lead the rebel faction. Let your politicians do what they must. Let the lawyers go into court and get the temporary injunctions. But I will come back again and again and again to be real. To stop the migrant to stop the migrant and to save the rich, save Ford Hamilton, prevent it from coming here, save our city, save our state, and save America. This is for naught if we don't make a change on election day. November 7th, the city council races. Very few people know that we have races going on. There are two we're going to talk about tonight. The main one, Ari Kagan, who is an immigrant himself, who will speak next, is battling Justin Brandon, who has sold you out now. This is the third time. No cash bail. Defunded the police and welcomed the illegal aliens into Bay Ridge and Fort Hamilton. On November 7th, in early voting, you got to get people out. Whether you got to put them in a wheelchair, bus, van, walk them there, make sure they do early voting and voting on the day of the election. And I'll wait. The next city councilman from this district and kick Justin Brennan out back to being a wannabe rock star on the stage, Harry Kagan. to talk after Gertrude Sliwa. <laughs> so good. So, I'm sorry. It's very hard to follow. 
First of all, I would like to thank Councilman Justin Brennan for advertising this rally today. He sent text message to every resident of Bay Ridge. He advertised this rally and now we have a huge crowd. Thank you. <laughs> he also called Curtis Leva and myself all possible names. I can tell you, Curtis Leva is a patriot of New York. He was fighting mafia, people like Justin Brennan, you know? He was fighting mafia, he, he, he has scars to prove it. He's riding on subway every day. He's talking to homeless people every day. He's the soil of New York City. Thank you so much, Curtis, for Yay! making us stay. Thank you so much. is not just about me or Justin Brennan. This election is about future of New York City. All papers possible, every day calling about this race, writing about this race, TV, by the way, debates are finally coming. I am so eager to start this debate. Tomorrow is the first one. I would like to debate every day. The difference is so stark, I cannot even start. Talking about migrants, maybe some of you know that Councilman Justin Brennan co-sponsored and voted for a legislation. If you are 30 days in New York City, 30 days in New York City, and you have a work authorization, you are allowed to vote for mayor and for city council. New York State Supreme Court called this law unconstitutional and mayor and speaker are appealing this decision of the courts. They want all migrants who will get work authorization to be able to vote after 30 days in New York City. I remember myself after 30 days in New York City. I barely knew the names of the corners of the street. And yes, Curtis is right. Before I became citizen, it takes you five years to live in America. It takes you to learn English. It takes you to learn American civics. And also, by the way, another requirement, good moral character. Yeah! And now we have completely opposite picture. Open borders, no questions asked. Please come and stay anywhere you want. I was asked today many times, why are we doing this rally before we are having any kind of migrant shelter around the corner? Why we are doing it now? I can tell you why. One day I received a call from a parent from Coney Island telling me New York City Councilman representing today, Coney Island, telling me, by the way, Councilman, do you know there are several buses coming to PS-188 on Neptune Avenue, and it looks like it's going to be migrant shelter inside elementary school gym. I said, no. How is it possible? I started to call City Hall, Office of Emergency Management. I was told, don't worry, it's temporary center. It's just temporary shelter. Yeah, right. Maybe for a few weeks. Yeah, we, will not. we are overwhelmed. It's totally unexpected. Every day people coming and coming. And then I've heard the sentence I'm hearing every day from City Hall, from Office of Emergency Management, from everybody who is talking to me about this topic. All options are on the table. All options are on the table. And then they are asking me, why did I host rally of concerned parents in Coney Island telling school gym belongs to children, not to migrants. Yeah. Yeah. The very next day after this rally in Coney Island, they brought more buses and took away this migrants to Roosevelt Hotel the very next day. So we are, have full right and we are doing the right thing by hosting this rally tonight, right now and right here. We are not waiting till they will open 30 migrant shelters around this neighborhood. Then it will be too late. Then it will be very late. Today, Mayor said at the press conference, you will see, be ready. It will be in front of every house, in every neighborhood. All options are on the table. And then they are asking us, why are we protesting? Do I live in America? Do we have a First Amendment right to protest? And my opponent responds to every question about migrant shelters in Bay Ridge. 
This is international humanitarian crisis. Our compassion is limitless. He never said, oh. I'm against it, I oppose to it. He is going around. Do you know why? Because his progressive base will eat him alive if he will say anything against it. Because they love it. They want more people to come. They want more open borders policy. They want all of us to pay more taxes. He voted for 1.4 billion dollars in June for migrant services. And now we're learning it will be 12 billion dollars within three years. And more coming. Where are all of this money coming? From our taxes. And then he complains about voted against this insanity. Of course I am against this insanity. I am immigrant, third generation immigrant. I came legally. I went through several interviews, background checks, health checks. I even gave, they asked me to, them, to give blood to check whether I have AIDS or tuberculosis. That was in 1992, by the way. And I didn't do it in New York. I didn't do it in the Bronx. I did it in American embassy in Moscow. So why we cannot do it all in Mexico, not in Brooklyn? Exactly. Why we cannot invest money in additional immigration charges, consulate services back in Mexico? Why we are inviting everybody here and then you're right. Are you Venezuelan? Yes, okay, he's Venezuelan. No background checks, no vetting. Oh, it's impossible. It's not gonna be in Bay Ridge. You know what? Did anybody here saw this list of 3,000 sites? 3,000 sites in New York City. I asked repeatedly, show me. Show me the full list. Where are you planning to put all of these migrants? No, it's a secret information. Super secret information. You know what? I do not believe a word they're saying. One word. Because they're changing this the next second. And I learned it already from Coney Island story. So I know it can happen tomorrow morning in Berish. And next day in Fort Hamilton, the next day in Dakir Heights. And you know what happened in Staten Island? You know what happened oh, in San yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, Our schools, our parks, our senior centers, our assisted living facilities, our recreational centers are for communities to enjoy, not for migrant shelters. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Not now, not ever. Not now, not ever. Not now, not ever. Not now.
we have a man who's busted his shoes across the state. He's run for state controller. He's run for city controller. He knows how to run a tough race. If you say to Justin Brandon you're a socialist, he truly is, but he won't acknowledge it. But if you go towards Sunset Park, there is a city council woman named Aviles, who is a mini-me of AOC, all our crazy Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, leader of the socialists. He is embedded in Sunset Park. This man decided to take her on because we got to take the socialists out. Yeah. And what a surprise they had in their backyard about three months ago when Democrats and Republicans came together at Sunset Park when Eric Adams took the recreational center next to the pool and gave it to 100 illegal aliens. 40 socialists showed up. 500 first generation Chinese Americans showed up to say no to illegal immigration. Yes, to legal immigration. And the socialists were shocked. The man who's going to take a view us out and help us take back the city council from the socialists, those who identify as socialists, Avila. I give you Paul Rodriguez. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. So my name is Paul Rodriguez. And as Curtis mentioned, I was the candidate for New York State Controller last year. And actually, I was a resident of this district not too long ago. Imagine in 2022, and for many years I had been represented by Justin Brannan. As bad as that was, it, compa it didn't compare to then waking up a few days later and finding out that with the redistricting, I'm now represented by Alexa Aviles, who, mind you, she is not a liberal. She is not a progressive. She is an avowed, dedicated socialist. She is one of those people who still proudly supports defunding the police, closing all the jails. She's completely hostile to school choice, even though she herself benefited from going to another school outside of New York to get a better education. See, she is completely unsympathetic to homeowners or business owners, because after all, she doesn't believe in private property. She wants to rezone everything so we can just put tenement buildings where everybody simply lives all together. Not have your own home, not be the master of your own destiny. And by the way, people like her, who now keep increasing the number in the city council, they feel that the American values that we all hold dear, of each individual having life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, is one of the most toxic qualities of our country. Now mind you, I'll tell you, I'm Puerto Rican. I'm married to a Mexican immigrant who is a, who is a citizen now. And the only reason why I even bring that up is because you'll probably hear tomorrow or later from Justin Brannan or some of or, or from Alexa that I'm a white supremacist and why is that because I actually believe that elected officials should do their job and what is their job is to represent their constituents which is all of us and that means prioritizing your interests and your concerns but what is it that we have now we simply have all of the city council uh officials the mayor everyone in the government and the state government telling you you have to be quiet be good boys and girls be nice quiet obedient sheep that's what they want from you is that what we're going to be and you know why they want to do that? Because they want to keep hidden their complicity in the chaos that we're seeing with this migrant crisis. You know, it's very easy to advocate for open borders, to basically give the finger to the federal government when they want help enforcing immigration laws. When you further defy them by saying we are going to be a sanctuary city, it's very 
easy to do that when you're thousands of miles away from the southern border, El Paso, which I actually lived in for a year, and you never really expect to have to face the consequences of that virtual signaling, because that's the difference between public policy and virtual signaling, is consequences and having a plan. And as Curtis has always said, we have the swagger man with no plan, and that includes the rest of the city council. They have no plan. So all they can do is keep you quiet, and if you deign to say a word, then all of a sudden you're a racist. You're a xenophobe. You're a hateful bigot and you hate people. Well, you know what I say? Bueno, I'm, I'm not going to say it even in Spanish because it's kind of vulgar. But that's not true. All we do is we believe that representatives should represent their constituents. And in my district now, which is Dyker Heights and Sunset Park and Red Hook, that is primarily immigrants. Whether you're first generation or the children or grandchildren of immigrants or members of the diaspora, Puerto Rican diaspora like me, these people simply want their concerns heard. And the more you try to silence them, the angrier they're going to get, as you can see. And you know what happens when people cannot discuss their problems and cannot air them out? The angrier we get, the worse we go to our corners, and the more chaos ensues. So that's why we need to not take this election for granted. It may be an off-off year, but we need to make an impact in the city council and take out some of those socialists away. Yes. Yeah. Because my opponent, Alexa Aviles, she's not a poser. She's not a pretender. She's a true, believing, dedicated socialist. And despite her smile and her mild-mannered demeanor, she's a very firm believer and her values do not really coincide with our American values. So, please, on November 7th, do not falter. You have to get out. And between now and then, do not be silent, because this is democracy. This is what democracy looks like. if not for the rebels on Staten Island. Yeah. Out of all the boroughs, they've done it the best. The politicians have come together, Republicans and Democrats. The lawyers have gone into court and got a stay of St. John's Avila, which is in Grasmere, right on the other side of the Verrazano Bridge. And as you saw, the neighborhood came out in Midland Beach and would not be turned into speed bumps when they tried to sneak in illegal aliens under the cover of darkness into what used to be a senior citizen home for the greatest generation. Women who were married to many men who served in World War II and the Korean War and in peace time. Kicked out! Our next speaker represents the rebel faction. I'm proud of the rebels because without them, we could not have made yeah. Custer's last stand. <laughs> it is the Alamo St. John's Vila Academy. And we will persevere because all eyes all around the country and all around the world are wondering how a borough of 500,000 stopped the most powerful city and state government in the nation and the federal government. Well, here's one of the people who made that possible. I consider him a fellow rebel, Scott Lebedo. Yeah, it's uh, good to uh, be over the other side of the gangplank here. Um, now, I, uh, you know, Curtis, I, I can't say, I'm not, I, I, there's no words, you all know Curtis. He's the runner of this movement, and he is going to be our next mayor. Yeah. That's a fact. That is a fact. 
Now, I'm, uh, those of you who know me know I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not always saying nice, pretty things. I am not here to make friends. I am here to make things right. Because like Curtis Sliwa, for the last 30 some odd years, I have been warning people, using my artwork, using my activism and my words, that this stuff, this garbage that is coming down upon you, the working people, the hard-working people of this once great city that we will get back, okay? You are getting the shit end of the stick really bad. Now here's a tough love. The whole world watches us in Staten Island. Now, if there's anybody who has the brass, who has the, I will not take garbage from anybody like us Staten Islanders, is Bay Ridge. We are exactly the same. Oh yeah, it's nice. Four, five hundred people here. That's nice. But it should be five thousand. And it has to be the next time. My job has always been with tough love, with guilt, to call you out and be in the street peacefully. That's right. of this revolution is we do not use guns. No. We do not need a bayonet. No. We do not need to burn no. or flip police cars. No. No. We use FIFA. Amendment 1. Yep. Yes. They watch. That's why we are progressing. That's right. I do oh, interviews man. from all over the world. Rich, right? They want to know what we're doing in Staten Island. I get emails and text messages. I'm in Connecticut. What are you doing? How are you doing it? <laughs> it's the easiest thing in the world. Yes. And here's my advice. And I want you people to share this on your social media. You get a couple of good lawyers. You can't tell me that in this group or in this community don't have a couple of real patriotic lawyers like we do in Staten Island. Yeah. Mark Fonte and Lou Journal Amino who saw the people angry. Yeah. Yeah. The pain. They won a monumental lawsuit. The world is watching. So listen to me. Very simple. You get a couple of good lawyers. You fight the city tooth and nail. But more importantly, is the next rally you have here, hopefully within a couple of days. Again, tough love from Uncle Scotty here. Just because you showed up at this rally, don't mean you shouldn't be at the next one. And bring five people. Our founding fathers, they had farms to tend to, and they said, let the crops rot. I have a community, a country to save. The food wasn't on the table. Their kids starved for a day or two to fight for the future of not only this country, but their family. So when I hear somebody saying, I had to work, or I had a, a party to go to, I'll, that's bullshit. This is the only way that we stop this. Yes, you vote, but they, they are not used to seeing the working people in the street. Advantage of yes, more guilt from me. 
our complacency as we all sucked up the milk and honey all of these years not realizing that it was coming and here it is here it is it is the only way that you get in the streets next week you have another one here a bigger one that's how it changes that's how we're doing in Staten Island trust me keep at it this is our community. This is our country. Yes. Yes. We need it back, and we will get it back. Keep out in the street. USA! 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 Let's have a great round of applause for Scott Lebedo and the great Patriots from Staten Island who are holding it down on the other side of the Verrazano. Some of who have joined us here today. Let's give them a great round of applause. You can do me a favor because... The vehicle and the way most of this information is getting out is on the radio station that I work at, WABC. It's the only place you find this information. Let's give a great round of applause to the owner and operator, John Casamitini. My partner in the morning, Sid Rosenberg, who dedicates a lot of time to this issue and has helped me lead the route the rallies at Floyd Bennett Field. But I'll never forget an interview that occurred. The Scott Lebedo mentioned lawyers. You had two graduates of Poly Prep, well-known graduates. Arthur Idala, who bragged the other day that they, they blocked off a part of 86 and had a celebration for him and his family. Well, when he was given an opportunity of representing the people at Floyd Bennett Field, he said on the most powerful radio station in the nation, nothing could be done. It's over. Well, now the problem is here in Bay Ridge. You know where Artie Idala lives. You go knock on his door and say, hey, buddy, are you going to protect us here in Bay Ridge? Hey! Don't be shy. This is about your neighborhood. Yeah. If he can't represent his neighborhood that he talks about all the time, he loves Bay Ridge, this is the time to use your legal skills for the people you grew up with. Yeah. And then there's Joe Tacopina. Oh, I went to Poly Prep. I love Bay Ridge. I love Dyke Heights. I love Fort Hamilton. Let me tell you, the second place, the second location, is in Fort Hamilton. And I'm going to drop this bomb on Arthur Idella and Joe Tacopina tomorrow. You know where the Veterans Hospital is that they always threaten to close? Oh my God. You know where Fort Hamilton High School is? Many of you went there, your children, your grandchildren. And you know where the elite have gone poly prep. I still can't figure out how a man's man could say, I went to poly prep day school. <laughs> you spent a lot of schedule, a lot of moolah schmoolah to go there. They're going to put it right between the Veterans Hospital and poly prep. Wow. Now, oh, no. now, wow. if you know Arthur Idell, as many of you should, Great father, I remember his father, boy, that handlebar mustache. His Michigan uh, mother who runs up and down the streets telling me I shouldn't call Mario Faccia Bruta Cuomo. But she's a good woman. She loves this neighborhood. You go up to them and say, hey, please, your son has the skill level to represent us. We don't have money. We're hardworking, blue-collar, working-class people. Please, him, Joe Tacopina, it's time. Do a little pro bono work. You get paid a lot of money by a lot of heavy hitters out there. Save your neighborhood. Just like the lawyers, Lou Gelamino and Mark Bunty are doing in Staten Island. That's number one.
Scott. Number two, it just opened up a no-tell motel hotel right there at 7th Avenue and 86, right? Right? Why, why do you think they just opened up now? Why? Figure it out. Follow the money. As Eric Adams has always lived to that battle cry. Follow the money. Show me the money. Follow the money. That hotel exists for one reason. It ain't because it's packed. It's not the Love Motel every night. Right. One hour in, one hour out. Nope. It's there to make money on the illegal aliens. That's right. I'm doing the deep dive tomorrow with my wife Nancy. Again, she'll get all the details. It's probably an LLC. That's how they hide who they are. Those fiends. You go inside. Obviously, the owner operator is probably not there. You leave little notes for the clerk. Don't intimidate him. I don't want you uh, getting locked up like I always get locked up. <laughs> There'll come a time when we'll call for acts of civil disobedience here. Now, this is not the time. You go into that hotel. You let them know no illegal aliens in this community. None. We know why you're open. Don't tell us there's a, a huge demand. You know, tourism is, is suddenly, it's exploding. The people want to take the R train. By the way, the worst stinking subway ride in the city. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, the worst. All the way to 86 to walk over to 7th Avenue. You know why it's there, right? Make sure it never opens up for illegal aliens. Let's go. Make sure the clerks, the people who work there, the owners will find out. I will find out. Nancy will find out who the hidden owners are. And if we got to sue, because there are nine lawyers for every one citizen and they practice their martial art all day of I sue, that's a target because they purposely set up to make money on the taxpayers by bringing illegal aliens into Bay Ridge. That ain't happening. So I'm just giving you three locations. And let's see if Justin Brennan wants to continue to call me a comic book villain who's a serial liar. Sure Road, 77, right by the ball fields near the public bathrooms. 86 and 7, that new motel, hotel, whatever they call it. And obviously the grounds in between the Veterans Hospital, Port Hamilton, the high school, and Polly Prep, which is going to have a tent. The war begins today. Now, we've had a lot of testosterone here today. A lot of testosterone. I don't know who has more testosterone. Me, Scott Lebedo, Paul Rodriguez, Harry Kagan. Oh, my God. A lot of testosterone. I think it's our last speaker should be a little estrogen, don't you think? <laughs> Because guys do all the talking, but I'll tell you, each and every night in Staten Island, keeping the illegals out are the mothers and the grandmothers. Yes. They are vigilant. Yes. They have not abandoned ship. Nope. Without the women, this movement could not exist. Let's give a great round of applause to all those women who right now are surrounding those migrant centers to keep the illegal aliens out. Do not, under any circumstance, harm a hair on any migrant's head. They are just political pawns. Imagine if you were in a third world country where you don't even have a toilet. You don't even have running water. And all of a sudden, on Telemundo or Univision, you saw this guy, this bald-headed, earring-wearing mayor in a $5,000 suit, all silk, no cotton, inviting you to come to New York City. Imagine you're sitting in your hovel, and Cardinal Dolan, on behalf of Catholic Charities, is telling you, come on, we got the money. It ain't the church's money, it's the federal tax dollars. We'll bring you to New York and imagine you're in a hovel watching the schmuck the putz Chuck E. Cheese Schumer oh. say that the reason they have to bring in all the illegal aliens is you actually followed the guidelines of Planned Parenthood 
and you use marital contraception and you didn't have enough kids. So now we need worker bees. It's your fault. Nonsense. That's over. Divide us by our ethnic group, our racial background, our geography. Don't let Eric Adams play the race card as he always has. It's us and we, not I and me. Remember, when you come across your critics, you say this is to defend our community, our city, our state, our country from an illegal invasion. We are here to protect everybody who's here legally. Thanks for coming tonight. We'll let you know of additional rallies. Make sure you make a visit to that no-tell motel holiday over there at 86th and 7th, and you let them know they better not be bringing in any illegal aliens or there'll be a hell of a price to pay. We'll be outside of their door morning, noon, and night. Thank you. Thank you for coming tonight. And fellow Americans, this song was actually a prayer, okay? We cannot do it without Almighty God. That's what George Washington's mother said to him. So here we go. God bless America.